irresistibly beautiful. But if the man yields to her seductions, then he will be ruined in body and in soul. This is the tale of the Lanan Shi, the fairy woman. There was once a man who was walking the long, long country road home to Craig Niche. And on his journey, he soon has an eerie feeling that he's being followed. When he glanced out of the corner of his eye, he soon perceives the outline, the shape, the shadow of that dreaded being of whom his people have spoken for generations. It is the outline of a Lanan Shi, a most beautiful fairy woman. She comes up behind him and she sighs as they do, and then she tugs at his sleeve to make him turn around. But the man knows that if he does this, then she shall have power over him forever after. And so the man takes a handkerchief from his pocket and he binds his eyes with it. When she goes by, the man removes the kerchief. And now he sees that she's carrying under her arm a small wooden chest. She goes over to a gorse bush, she places the chest under the gorse bush and she disappears. The man now tears a shred from his kerchief and he ties it to a branch of the gorse bush so that he will remember and he continues his journey home. The next day he comes back to that very same place, he unearths that small wooden chest from under the gorse bush and he carries it back home to his house. When he arrives there, he places the chest on his table and he opens the lid. Inside, there is gold, lumps and nuggets of gold. There is also a long rope made of shining golden hair. Well, the man doesn't know quite what to make of all this. What can he do with a lump of gold? What can he do with a rope of hair? And so he decides to bury his treasure. He buries it under a tremon tree. This is an elder. He knows the Lanan Shi will not be able to get out of bed. But from that very day, my friends, the Lanan Shi, the fairy woman, she would come by the house, she would gaze in through the window at him, and she would sigh a long, heartbreaking sigh. But the man did not lift his eyes to see her face. Soon after this, he decides it might be better if he were to be married. Perhaps then she wouldn't trouble him at all. And so the next day, he goes on a long journey across the island to Port Erin to see his good friend, a young Christian. When he arrives at Ilyam Christian's house, they sit down and the man says to Ilyam, Ilyam, will thou give me the girl Johnny for a wife? Ilyam Christian says, Johnny is not for the likes of thee. And besides, there's a good man you want here. We come around offering for him. And a fine house at him. And a pig in the bank. The man says, but I've a house. I've a cow. And there's gold at me too, same as a pig in the bank. Ilya <laughs> Christian laughs, he says, show me the gold. I'm thinking the gold of the Kushak flower is all that I will ever have. And a thatch wanted man in his poor shelter, and a cow that's near dry as no cattle. Oh, the man gets very angry about this, so he storms off. He goes back to his house as fast as he can. He unearths that small wooden chest from under the tramon tree and he brings it back to Ilya Christian's house. When he arrives there, he places the chest on his table, he opens the lid, and he shows Ilya Christian exactly what's inside. Ilya Christian, he studies the contents for a long, long time. And then he says, Thou had better heave that rope of hair into the sea. Tis mermaid's hair, I'm thinking. But the gold, Gold, 
thou wilt take to do leash. And them that's there, they'll give thee good money for it. And so the man did exactly as William Christian said. He took the gold to do leash, and there indeed they gave him very fine money for it. And soon it was that he and Joni, they were married. At the wedding feast there was music, dancing, laughter, and ale plenty. There was the casting of the shoe after the bride as by custom. And when all the festivities were done, he and Johnny went back to his house. But that very night, my friends, the Lana and she, the fairy woman, she came to the house. She gazed in through the window at them and she sighed, a long heartbreaking sigh. And Johnny, Johnny, she says, what's that? And the man says, "'Tis but the wind in the fuchsia bush." And then the little and she, she uttered a long, long cry that was borne away in the wind. And Johnny, Johnny, she says, there's some person crying outside. And the man says, "'Tis but a sea bird a calling." Soon after this, Johnny has to go across the island to visit her old mother who is very sick. The man was left all by himself. He was lying in bed one night, wide awake. The moon was at the full, and it came streaming in through the uncurtained window. And it was then that the Lenan she came. She gazed in through the window at him. She sighed, a long, heartbreaking sigh. And it was then that the man lifted his eyes and he saw the face. And it was more beautiful than moonlight on water or the first primrose of spring. He got up, he dressed himself, and no one knows where he went. And although the time seemed to him to be but a single day, it was seven long, long years before he arrived back at that house. And that evening when he did, he came and looked in through the window, and there was Johnny rocking the cradle. And there was a strange man in the master's chair. He came in at the door and he looked on him and he said, Johnny, Johnny, dost thou not know me? Tis thy husband come home. But Johnny, Johnny, she says, oh, no, 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 sir. Seven long years ago, my first husband was drowned fell over the brook, they were saying, and was seen no more. Five years I waited for him, and then I married you one tear. The man now goes over to the wall, and there is a large brass pan hanging there, and he looks at himself reflected. His hair is white, his form is bent, and his face is completely withered. And as he looked behind him, beyond the open door, the Lenad she appeared, and he saw her face reflected in the shining brass. He uttered one long, long cry, and away into the night, and he was seen no more. Now, at times, on moonlight nights, some would hear the Lenan she sighing, and they would see a beckoning hand. But if a man did this, he would say the Lord's Prayer quickly. And many a man carried about with him a charm in the shape of a bone of the Bolan fish or a twig of curl. As for the gold in Dulish, they say that it melted away and left nothing but a heap of withered leaves. And they say too, that it would be far, far better for a man to jump over the edge of the brook and be drowned than to look upon the face of the Lenan she. For then, then there is no more peace at him, but only wandering and wandering forever for the face of the fairy woman is lovelier than a dream and lonelier than a sea bird's 